San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday. It is August 18th and we have more activity on radar well outside San Antonio. We're going to check in with Justin in just a moment. Some surprising numbers though coming in in one of the business sectors. Yeah, and we have this article by the way on kset.com. So housing construction slumps 7% in July to 1.3 Five three million units. It did. Uh, they're calling that a sharp seven percent as home builders struggled to cope with a variety of different headwinds. So the decline in July put home construction at a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 1.53 million units. That was according to the Commerce Department uh, reported this on Wednesday. Application for building permits, which can forecast future activity, rose 2.6 percent in July from the June level to an annual rate of 1.64 million homes. So a survey of home builder confidence saw expectations fall sharply in August to the lowest level in a year as builders struggled with high construct construction costs, supply shortages and rising home prices. Yeah, the National Association of Home Builders and Wells Fargo said its survey dropped five points to a reading of 75 this month. So a number of other economic indicators here as we uh, enter the second half of the year and get closer to wrapping up the month of August. Yep, a lot changing in August. For now, let's look at today's nine at nine. The Northside Independent School District Board of Trustees has voted to impose a temporary mask mandate for all students, staff, and visitors. The mandate goes into effect next Monday, which is the first day of school for San Antonio's largest school district. Governor Greg Abbott is now one of the 207,000 positive COVID cases in the state of Texas. The governor is fully vaccinated and is asymptomatic. He will isolate the governor's mansion and continue daily testing. Texas First Lady Cecilia Abbott tested negative. Federal health officials are expected to announce the need for a booster shot as early as today. President Biden's agenda includes delivering remarks on the COVID-19 response and vaccination program. The extra dose will be recommended for anyone over the age of 12. The Taliban have agreed to allow safe passage through Afghanistan for civilians struggling to join a U.S. directed airlift from the capital. A timeline for a full evacuation has not been worked out with the nation's new rulers. Tropical Storm Grace is now back over open waters after dumping up to 15 inches of rain on Haiti. Forecasters say the storm could become the season's first Atlantic hurricane before it hits the Yucatan Peninsula. Opening statement set to begin for R&B singer R. Kelly this morning. Kelly accused of multiple federal charges of sex trafficking and racketeering. The trial is expected to last around a month. A mandate with an original expiration date of September 13th is now extended through January. The TSA announcing masks will be required in airports and on planes through the rest of the year. The FAA says they've had over 2,800 reports of passengers violating the mandate this year. Pope Francis urging everyone to get vaccinated, releasing a video this morning saying getting a shot is, in his words, an act of love. When Girl Scout cookie season rolls around again, there will be a new entry on the menu. The Girl Scouts revealing what it calls the adventureful cookie inspired by brownies. They're expected to be available nationwide, and that's today's 9 at 9. Well, we saw some showers and storms in parts of the Texas Hill Country late yesterday, but it didn't amount to much of anything here in San Antonio. But today, a little drizzle here and there. Yeah, there were a couple of showers earlier in San Antonio. Those have since moved away. We've got some cloud cover right now. It is extremely humid. That's going to be sort of the story of the day. It's the heat index. I think it's going to drop a jump, not drop, jump above 105. And uh, right now we already have a heat index. Even at this hour, it feels like 85 here in San Antonio. It feels like 92 in Pleasant. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. So you can imagine what those numbers will look like this afternoon. 95, your high temperature. There is still a 30% chance of some storms today. Some of those pop ups, but it'll be few and far between. And after today, I think rain really goes away and temperatures start to heat up a little bit. Uh, let's look at uh, the radar and I'll show you where that rain is right now. Still some showers up there north of New Braunfels. Those are pushing north and sort of falling apart. Another little shower out near Gonzales. And then there's an uh, area of heavy rain up in parts of the hill country. Lakey up towards Rock Springs. Some good rain, some lightning strikes mixed in there too. That's tracking off to the north and northeast. Very quickly, pollen count. Molds are moderate. They are dropping. Pigweed is low at 20. And your forecast for today, again, a 30% chance of rain. We'll top out at 95. We'll talk about some of that heat that is headed our way. 
coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. Taking a look outside with Transguide this morning, looking at Highway 90 and now looking at Loop 410 and Marbuck Road. Things are moving smoothly right now. Top stories this morning, a person is dead following an overnight crash on the city's northeast side. It happened just after midnight in the southbound lane of I-35 near O'Connell Road. And that's where San Antonio police say a man was running across the highway when he was struck by a woman's vehicle. That man died at the scene. Police say the driver did stop to help and will not be facing charges. A northeast side home went up in flames early this morning with seven people inside the home. This happened in the 12,000 block of La Lira in a neighborhood between Wurzbach Parkway and Perambidal. Sarah Costa has been on the scene all morning and she has an update. Sarah. Good morning. Now that the sun is up, you can really see how intense this fire was and the damage done to this home. You can still see some of that smoke coming off of the roof. The roof completely collapsed in and you see all that charring and water damage to the front of the home. Now one woman was taken to Bamsey in critical condition for smoke inhalation. Seven people were inside the home when it caught fire. The woman's husband was treated for smoke inhalation as well on scene, but he's doing OK now. The five others all made it out of the house safe without injuries. Firefighters say they were called out to this home in the 12,000 block of La Lira Street just after 3 o'clock this morning. One of the women who got out safely said she was using the microwave. Then shortly after she noticed a spark and the whole wall was on fire. Firefighters say they believe the cause was electrical. The fire spread to the attic, then through the rest of the home. I spoke with the homeowner, 58 year old Victor Aguilar, who says he was trapped inside his front bedroom with his wife. He got out through a window. He attempted to pull his wife to safety, who has a prosthetic leg, but was unable to. Shortly after that, firefighters arrived and were able to pull her out and transfer her to Bamsey. They owned four dogs. All but one were rescued in the flames. This morning, an emotional one for Victor and his family. He says this is his childhood home. He's lived here for over 50 years. And at this time, arson investigators are not being called out to investigate because firefighters, again, believe this was an electrical fire. From the northeast side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Sarah. Turning back to our back to school coverage now. Brand new campus just opened to the far west side of town. This is the first time teachers and staff are welcoming students into classrooms. Max Massey is live at Idea Amber Creek with details on some of the features the new school has to offer. Good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. Let's see how this is working. Uh, see, we're teaching kids don't be afraid to fail this morning. But if you look up, you'll see a big mascot in the background. That is the Admirals joined here with the principal. So, principal, why the Admirals? We are super honored to be able to uh, honor David Robertson's service both to the community and in his military service. All right, so for those of us who haven't heard of IDEA Public Schools before, what should parents, what should students, people in the community, what should they know about it? Uh, IDEA Public Schools is different in that we backwards plan from that first year of college all the way down to pre-K. So we are teaching them at every grade level what they need to be successful, to get to and through the college of their first choice. Okay, back in the classroom. Actually, first time in the classrooms here. Brand new school. Yeah, brand new. What should uh, people know about it? Uh, we well, we are super excited to be back 100% in uh, live in-person learning, and we know that this past year has been really, really tough for both the scholars and for their families. And so, being back in that classroom, we're able to start closing some of those gaps that this. Uh, pandemic year has might have caused. Okay, I'm going to pass you the ball. You take a shot. All right. Let's see it. Boom. All right. Uh, We're outside. We're all about rebounds here. Uh, so your shirt says no excuses. Can you explain why? Yeah, so it, we always have no excuses all over our building, all over our shirts, because um, we do whatever it takes to get that job done. We don't make excuses. We find solutions. All right, let me, let me get one more. We'll finish out the last shot. And guys, I got to tell you, uh, Oh, so close yet so far. The best part about this though, the one-on-one -on -one technology. You heard the principal talk about technology. We're gonna give you an inside look at augmented reality coming up at 9.30. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Max. Good job there. In news this morning, uh, for the past four months, a local CEO shifted his duties to embark on a 9,000-mile trek on an electric bike to close the gap in care for seniors. Jeff Slater, founder and CEO of Caring Senior Service, biked across the country to raise awareness and money 
for grab bars to be installed in local seniors' homes. Alicia Berrera joins us live now. She caught up with Slater, who recently completed his journey. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it was definitely, as you can imagine, a very tough physical but also mental journey for Jeff. So much that the CEO confessed to me that there was a point very early on in his journey that he actually thought about coming back home. However, his motivation was and continues to be the seniors his company serves. Through hills, wind, desert, exhaustion, and more, Jeff Slater completed his goal. It was amazing. I traveled a full 9,500 miles, uh, visited 30 different states along the way, and uh, just met incredible people every, every stop I'd made. I drive a In March, he pedaled off on his electric bike with a tiny camper attached to visit each Caring Senior Service office and meet with city leaders and activists for the Grab the Bar campaign. So we're really trying to look at what we can do to impact our local communities and help really continue to foster that conversation between uh, senior leaders in our communities. The road to get there was tough. But mental toughness is something you've got to be prepared for. And though I prepared myself for it, it's not until it happens that you really got to kind of dig deep. Uh, flats were a regular occurrence, uh, not too many, but enough to where definitely was uh, changing my tires about every probably once or twice a week would have a flat tire. But it was his desire to meet his goal to raise $100,000 to install grab bars in seniors homes that kept him fueled. I had a lot of people hand me money along the way after hearing my story to donate directly to our campaign. And that was that was incredible to have someone that you just met tell your story and then have them donate to your cause it was really, really a, a cool experience. 9,000 miles, so much. Jeff is finally back home and stationary. He's back in the office and the movement to close the gap continues as they're still more than $35,000 away from meeting their goal. So if you feel called to donate, we'll have a link for that on ksat.com. Mark, Steph, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. And time now is 910, about 80 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMS 89, we take you inside an urgent care center for a look at what they're facing as they take on the added pressure from hospitals overflowing with COVID patients. Tropical depression Fred leading to major flooding across the southeast. David has a look next in your morning headlines. 913, you do morning headlines. We'll bring up the day on the situation in Afghanistan and another huge fire in California is out of control. From fires to flooding in South Carolina. And what is that song? You can set my truck on fire and roll it down a hill. I still wouldn't trade it for a Coupe de Ville. All right, David Sears is here to explain all of that. A little Joe Diffie for you this morning, and there is a connection. Okay. I remember Joe Diffie. Yeah, we'll yeah. show you the connection in just a second. But first, let's start with this. The situation in Afghanistan is still fluid. Confusion seems to be the reigning theme. So let's get you up to date on some of the latest headlines. First off, President Joe Biden is back in Washington, D.C. this morning. He was vacationing in Camp David when the chaos in Afghanistan broke out. He came back to D.C. to give that speech, returned to Camp David, and then last night came back to Washington to monitor the situation from the White House. There are over 10,000 Americans still stuck in Afghanistan. There are also tens of thousands of Afghans who are trying to leave that country as well. The U.S. says they will be trying to evacuate at least 9,000 a day. President Biden sending an additional 1,000 troops back to the region to help protect those trying to get out. And during a press conference, the Taliban said they are promising amnesty for the Afghans who worked with the U.S., but they don't want them taking their talents and skills to another country. Despite promises from the Taliban, women and girls in, of Afghanistan still sheltering in their homes. And for those trying to leave, getting to the airport may not be easy. There's only one road in and out, and it's being guarded by the Taliban. It could become difficult for Americans who are not near Kabul. The Taliban has set up checkpoints outside that city. Another fire in California burning out of control. It's the Caldor Fire. It has burned over 6,500 acres. The fire east of Sacramento, not far from Lake Tahoe, and that fire attacking the Grizzly Flats area. It has been tough to get under control because of the strong winds and the hilly terrain. So far, it is zero contained. It has taken more than 800 structures with it, though. It's unbelievable just to watch houses like this one become engulfed. Families have been evacuated. The Gustafson family checked into a hotel and found out the bad news. Another family still waiting on news about their home. We lost um, the ashes to my husband's parents. 
And I every picture that I had of my kids when they were little, like every picture, like nothing's left. Because the ash started blowing over us. There's no app to tell you if your house is gone. <laughs> you know, we've heard that it's more gone than not. The house is down there. So we're not, won't be surprised if ours is gone too. Tough situation for those folks. By the way, the hotels in that area are full, so some folks are even sleeping in church parking lots. From one extreme to another, fires to flooding. This flooding happening in the Greenville Spartanburg area of South Carolina. That was a highway underneath all that water. Five cars stuck right in the middle of the floodwaters. One driver had to be rescued by firefighters. Everybody was going through there, and it's like it was my luck that I, I had to stop. I stopped, so hey, come on. And it happened so fast, the next thing I know is it's, it's coming in for the floorboard. Crews ended up responding to about 50 rescue calls at any given time. Finally this morning, the big purple is now the little charcoal. That was a custom truck built back in 1999 for Richard Lang, but Monday it turned into a ball of flames while the truck was sitting on the street. It was struck by lightning and then caught fire. It burned up. Richard's girlfriend woke up and saw it first. He's like, your truck's on fire. It's like, crap. This big old dent right here was where the lightning struck. Richard will salvage what he can, like the axles. He could at least laugh about it a little. He said he was uh, looking on the bright side. That truck gets about nine miles to the gallon, so he's going to say, we <laughs> gas money. So there it lies, the connection to Joe yes. Diffie. The song. And not only that, you know, there's another line in there about uh, women like a pickup man. What's that line, Justin? How's that? Zach, Justin can sing the whole song for Something you. Something women like about a pickup man. Something women like about yeah. a pickup man. And who discovered the truck on fire? His girlfriend. His girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it all fits. It, all, it all fits. If the truck fits, get in and drive, drive it. Drive it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See, we, we, I think we just wrote another line to a country song. We sure did. <laughs> we'll start our Someone our called own. Joe Diffie ASAP. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Justin, yeah. who will probably not sing the song for us. David likes that song because he's a he's a pickup man. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. He's got a pickup in the parking lot. There you go. <laughs> Good stuff. Cut some music on a Wednesday morning. Uh, we got to talk a little bit about some rain. We've got some showers and a few storms out there at this hour. A lot of it uh, that was around San Antonio starting to die down. You see those uh, showers up around San Marcos. That is uh, moving north and really moving out of our area. We also noticed a few showers around Luling, out towards Gonzales. These are pretty light and moving pretty quickly. It's out in the hill country where we're getting some pretty heavy rain. We now have a flash flood advisory for some of this area where you see those lines that represents lightning. So we know that this is good heavy rain. It's going to put down some uh, uh, rainfall totals, maybe up to an inch in some cases, if not more. And you see the, the, the flood advisory there that stretches from eastern Edwards County into Real County. And this is just east of Rock Springs. So we'll keep an eye on that. That should continue to move northeast and likely move out of our area here in the next couple of hours. Here's what the forecast looks like as we get towards midday. Uh, a lot of this again moving east, northeast, and then we may still see a few lingering showers in the hill country. And then by the afternoon with some heating, we will get a few more showers and storms to pop up. Isolated stuff, pretty similar to yesterday, about a 30% chance of rain. This is around 7 o'clock. It does show a little bit of activity out there. So the forecast temperatures up around 94, 95 for a high, and there's your 30% chance of rain. I'd say about 3 o'clock to close to 7 p.m. This will be our, our best chance here in San Antonio. Outside right now, 80 degrees, cloudy skies, and the dew point is way up there. Lots of clouds around Bear County, at least for right now. Those should eventually burn off. 84 Castroville, 75 Bernie Stage, 83 Gonzales, more sun out there, and then quite a bit of cloud cover over Uvalde where it is 78. The dew points are just off the charts. Talking upper 70s, close to 80. Very, very sticky air. So as you might imagine, that is already creating a heat index. Feels like 85 here in town. Already have some 90s on the map. And the heat index this afternoon is likely going to climb above 100 here in town. And when you start seeing these numbers like 109, 110, that is dangerous heat. There are heat advisories posted down to our south. And uh, makes sense with these uh, heat, uh, heat indices like they are. Uh, we'll continue to get some pretty high heat index numbers next couple days. Very quickly, let's check in on Grace. So winds at 65 miles per hour near the Cayman Islands right now, moving towards Cancun. It'll be there by Thursday morning, 85 mile per hour winds, and then probably re-strengthening again out over the Gulf before making landfall in central Mexico. 
well south of Texas as we've been talking about. So no real effects for us. High pressure in the upper level is one of the reasons for that. It's pushing everything south, all that tropical activity south, and it builds in over Texas late in the weekend and into early next week. So get ready for some serious heat. We have the rain chances today, but after that they fall off and temperatures yeah, mid 90s this weekend. But by early next week, I think we could be could be flirting with now. Nah, I'm not even going to say it. Don't say it. You know what I'm talking about. Though. We do. Yeah, we, 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 we catch do, your drift and we don't want to talk about it. Yeah, let's yeah. Know. yeah. So there's kind of a group decision there yeah. here at KSAT. Fair enough. Can't speak for the other meteorologists, but thank you, Justin. <laughs> we right. appreciate it. 921, about 81 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a furry friend needs a new home. We're going to check in with the Animal Defense League. Look at these little twin guys. There is nothing cuter than a little black cat with green eyes. Michelle is here from the Animal Defense League. Hello. Oh, Aren't they the best pair? Yes, they yeah, are. Yeah, so it's this a, is a, a Fiji and Bali. Best vacation spots, if y'all are thinking of one. <laughs> these guys are, they are two months old. They're available for adoption at our main campus. And this week was actually National Black Cat Appreciation Day. Oh, really? So we're highlighting these babies. Sometimes black cats are some of the toughest to get adopted. Same with black dogs. They just kind of get overlooked but they are the best personalities. They're both super, super playful. And the nice thing about it, two cats like this, if they're brothers, it's really no different than having one at home. They're gonna use the same litter box. They'll entertain each other, so. Absolutely, yeah, and something yeah. great I would love to announce is we are actually hosting an adoption special and all of our pets will qualify. That's including all of our puppies, our kittens, adult dogs, adult cats. We are waiving their adoption fee and just asking for a donation in lieu of that fee. We're looking to get everybody home. Wow. It's a How big event. Go on? It's gonna be going until this coming Sunday mm -hmm. um, and we're just hoping to get everybody a home, honestly. So you're free, just a donation? Yes, exactly. Exactly. And, take, and, take with you. and it's our same adoption process. Come and visit them. It's an okay. uh, open availability. You can just walk in and then we'll sit down with you, go over everything that you need to know about caring for these babies. And if all goes well, you can leave with the pet the same day. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Again, all adoption fees are waived, but they are asking for donations. That's out there at the Animal Defense League, 11300 Nacogdoches, or of course the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Give them a call, 655 1481. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Nice to see a pet segment pop up on GMSA at 9. Yes, and of course, those cats love Mike, as do all the pets that we feature here. All of them. <laughs> 926, about 81 degrees. And a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Urgent care centers feeling the pressure as local hospitals overflow with patients. A look at what they're up against. That's after the break. And good morning, I'm Max Massey. Earlier we talked about basketball, brand new court, but now we are talking about AR and teaching kids with technology. We're gonna explain right after the break. And welcome back, it's about 9.30. The pandemic can last a few more months or a few more years. Warning from health officials about the continued roller coaster of waves and exhaustion our healthcare workers are facing and have already faced. Mayor Ron Nirenberg confirming our hospital saw 209 new COVID patients. Of those 24 are pediatric, showing children left vulnerable without a vaccine. Urgent care centers also feeling the pressure as they try to help with testing, vaccinations and treatments. KSET's Patty Santos reports. 1,200 daily patient visits at 19 Texas Med clinics in Bear, Travis, and Kamau counties. We're actually seeing numbers that are slightly above what we were seeing this time last year in August. About 600 of those are requests for COVID-19 testing. Another 100 are vaccine visits daily. Other illnesses keeping many non 24 hour clinic staff in till the wee hours of the morning. But Dr. David Good, COO and practicing physician, says his staff is hanging on. We're fortunate our staff is really maintaining a positive attitude. I think it'd probably be a lot more discouraging in a hospital setting where they're probably seeing much, much sicker people and having to deal with much more challenging problems than we are on a day-to-day -day basis. The number of registered nurses who asked to become inactive this year has nearly doubled compared to last year. There's been a 91% increase in the inactive status notices, and that's only three quarters of the data so far collected by the Texas Board of Nursing. Mental Health says an end to the pandemic is in the hands of the unvaccinated. The fear is the Delta variant will morph yet again. It's tight. Do we want to be in this for another few months or do we want to be in the pandemic for another 
year or more. A lot of it depends on how much we get vaccinated now. Well, Mayor Nierberg also encouraging mask wearing as well as a vaccine. Uh, host, ho, local hospitals continue to treat more than 1,000 COVID patients. As of this morning, 1,383 patients being hospitalized here. 370 are in ICU. 244 people are currently on ventilators at last check. 89% of the patients listed here are unvaccinated. And a quick look outside with live cam. We're at 80 degrees. It started pretty humid and, you know, when I stepped outside a few sprinkles, I wouldn't call them showers. So. Uh, there hasn't been much here downtown. We did have some pretty decent showers earlier on the north side. Those moved away quickly and there is a lot of humidity stuff. You're right about that. It is really thick today. Want to show you a great picture taken last night. Uh, near Woodlawn Lake. This is on our KSAC Connect. You can see the thunderstorm there off in the distance building. And we did have a few pop ups yesterday. We had some showers shed moving from the west too. They didn't have much success. We didn't get much rain here in town. But this morning we continue to watch some pretty heavy rain just to our west into the hill country between Rock Springs and Camp Wood over towards Lakey. Good downpour, some lightning strikes mixed in there and a flood advisory that's going to go for a while longer thanks to some pretty heavy rain that has fallen with that activity, which is sort of training a little bit, and that's why there are some concerns about flooding. Meantime, here around San Antonio, not much there. We're detecting a few light showers around San Marcos out towards Luling, but that's it, and uh, we're only looking for about a 30% chance of rain today. Temperatures will make it up to 95. I think the bigger story may be the heat index, which is likely going to jump up above 100 during the afternoon hours, guys. Thank you, Justin. Quick look at Transcad right now. 410 at Broadway, no problems, and also looking very good out at Highway 90 at Nogalitos on San Antonio's west side. And for a lot of students in our community, they are back in the physical classroom for the first time since March of 2020. This year, Idea Public Schools has a new campus with a lot of new features. Our Max Massey joins us live at Amber Creek Campus. Max, what's the kind of technology they have out there? Well, guys, right off the bat, I gotta tell you, it is deer time. Drop everything and read time. Take a look, I feel bad because we're being a little loud. These kids are trying to read, but they're using technology to do just that. We are joined here with the principal. So how are you guys incorporating technology in the learning process? Yeah, so the great thing with IDEA is we are offering 100% of our scholars one-on-one -on -one devices that they're able to continue their learning that they're learning in their core content classrooms. So what you see here are our scholars are engaging in a reading a book of their choice that's gonna support them with their fluency and their comprehension. Their goal is to read two million words as sixth graders by the end of the year. Wow, and so, you know, you see all the colleges on the board, you see Harvard, Duke, UCLA, UTSA, big shout, local fan favorite. Uh, you know, what, how does this help get them ready for the next step? Yeah, so college, with college, there's a lot of reading, we know that. <laughs> so it's building that skill to comprehend so that they're gonna be successful in their classes once they get to that college. So that college education and that mindset of hard work begins now, even in our pre-K, even through our pre-K classrooms, up to the sixth graders and up to 12th grade. Okay, how else are you guys incorporating technology? Yeah. So we have a lot of computer-based programs that's extending the learning, not just at school, but also at home. Um, so we have other programs such called, that's Dreambox, Imagine Learning, that's a fluency slash comprehension program. The Dreambox is a math computerized program that's supporting the math skills that they're learning in their core contents as well. All right, Principal, thank you so much. And if you guys have any questions about all this, we're gonna have all those answers. Just head to ksat.com. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. Oh, they're super studious back there. Yes. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. I know you had to be quiet while they're working over there. Almost the golf announcer voice. I know. You could tell the difference. 936, <laughs> about 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And thousands pass this mural of Martin Luther King Jr. every day without even thinking about it. However, for one local pastor, the painting tells a special message. That story after the break. Well, Here's what I want to know. Okay. Yeah. We always have to buy the number two pencils, right? Yes. Uh -huh. What is a number one pencil? What does that do? Has anyone ever used that? It does nothing on those tests you take because you have to have a number two pencil. <laughs> it have won't a pick two. it up. There's a guy always trying to skirt Ooh. the rules. 
Hey guys, it's me, Dylan, your GMSA at Nine producer. Justin and all the people at home, we've got some answers to your questions about the different shades of pencil. We're at the Southwest School of Art downtown. RJ and David are already inside getting some answers from an educator, a professional. Let's check it out. Hey, there's more to it than the yellow number two. Um, here is the 4B. Uh, this is the 3H. Okay, and the amazing thing is there are so many different levels of pencil, hardness and darkness, that you have your own pencil case. They all come in a case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Equipped with a pencil sharpener and is that an eraser? Yeah, this is an eraser. Okay, mm -hmm. but that's how many pencils there are. You can't just put it like in your pocket. You have to have a whole case for all right. these Right, uh -huh. this is so like a Swiss them. army knife of pencils here. <laughs> this number two pencil was kind of like a butter knife, right? Like you can get a lot done with a butter knife if you push hard enough, uh -huh. right? Um, but what this like range allows you to do is get those, um, get those, get that range of value, the darkness and lightness of um, the values without having to put so much effort in, right? If I want this to get really dark, I'm gonna layer it a lot or I'm gonna push really hard. A higher number B is gonna be softer blacker lead. And then a higher number H is gonna be harder, um, finer pointed lead. I can scribble this one and it's gonna get real dark really fast, right? Um, whereas on the other end, I'm gonna show you right next to it, this is the 5H. Um, this one was the uh, 6B. So here, like pushing hard, you're gonna get a much finer line and the, the lead is um, sharper and harder. This is an ebony pencil, which I think is kind of like in the 8B range. So they 8B? Can, yes, they can go higher, right? How high, did, what's yeah. the highest they go? I don't, you know, I don't know. It's infinity. I, right, I don't know. Just infinity Somebody and beyond out there the pencils. make a new, you know, blacker, darker pencil, I'm sure. But, um, but generally, like you can get packs that come in six or 12, and that's what you're gonna find in most art supply stores, yeah. Where, what kind of creation are we going to make today? Shade by number. Oh, shade. Look at this. Shade, shade by, by number. This is pretty much our speed right here. What age group would be doing this? Uh, so my uh, entry level art one students, nine through 12, their first, some of them, their okay. first uh, contact with value has so something to do with kids. like this. High school kids. Oh, I yeah. feel much better. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. great. Right. You. Get a 2B okay. or uh, how about get a 5H? Sure. And then let's say. get you uh, like a, let's get you a 4B. Let's do it. Okay. I only need one. Okay. Play Got a pair of beautiful pairs here. I seriously <laughs> doubt that. What happens if it all looks the same shade? <laughs> Compared to the picture, and you can always darken up some areas. There you go, like that. Uh huh. So it's gonna pick up that first layer of graphite. <laughs> you doing over there, RJ? Uh, not well. <laughs> Kind of lost it on this uh, on this outer area right here, and then this tube's kind of getting me a little bit. Art is very rarely about getting it right the first time. See, yeah, I, I blame the pencil. That's, <laughs> right, that's he's more happened. comfortable with the twos than you're learning a new a new tool here. Who needs twelve pencils? Exactly. <laughs> when you got one number two. Nice. Well, job. how about, how about that? Just, <laughs> wow. Or pairs. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> Dylan, who came up with this idea? Dylan. So, I guess, I guess, well, kind of David of guys, and I. Uh -huh. David really said it. He was like, "Okay, let's." He Googled it right, right after that. Yeah. Um, right after Justin asked that question, and he was like, "There's so many, blah blah blah," and I was like, "Let's a find out more." Yeah. So well, yeah, there was five that I Googled, but I didn't know yeah. there was like twelve. There was only five when it when it came up. There's like a, a one, a two, a two and a half, a three and a four, and then we walk in there and she's got this. this yeah, she's got this whole a, an eight. Of, yeah, I heard her say eight B. Yeah, eight B. Was that right? Yeah. Oh Amazing. my goodness. Yeah, yeah like, she brought up letters, and we were like, oh okay, <laughs> this is a whole new level. Now, full disclosure, yeah. they mm -hmm. kept all of this from Justin. He, yes. So this pops up, and he's like, what? You guys are like a human Alexa. That's the question. <laughs> good answers. It's yeah. amazing. That is yeah. the goal. Took took that quip to extreme. I'm waiting for Steph to say, why is it cold in here? And they go interview the penguins at SeaWorld. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Is that coming up Hey, next? that's an idea. But uh, we do want to thank uh, Jessica, yes. the, uh, the yes, art thank teacher, you, for, for putting up with us. She did a great job. She did a great yeah, job yeah. explaining all these pencils. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and, you know, who knew you could uh, take a pair and uh, color a pair with one pencil and do it by numbers? Not she bad. came with Shady. the whole setup. Yeah, not it, bad at it all. Look, it looked good. Hey, <laughs> Dylan, for a lot of our viewers, this is the yes. first time maybe seeing you. Yes, hello. Uh, are the, the behind the scenes guy here on GMSA at yep. 9. So how long have you been with KSAT? So that's 
that's a good question. I don't even remember. Is it uh, like <laughs> six <laughs> years? Six months? Seven years? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> probably like two months now. Okay. Yeah. Two and a half months. Something. And look, like, like, look yeah. what he's already doing. He's already I got us. Yeah. yeah. Out to all the Trying to make it pencil. fun. Good, with good you things guys. are happening. Yeah. We just have to mentally say there's Dylan Collins and then there's yes, Dylan sorry. Collier. They yes. are different guys yeah. all together here at KSAT. <laughs> yeah. I definitely was. I was watching before I came to you guys and yeah. heard his name, and I was like. Did somebody this, just say my name? Nope. Uh, it's close. Yeah, I had to, go, I had to rewind yep. and yeah. figure that out. So. Awesome. Well, we're glad you're here. Yes, we're yes. glad you're He's here. all about education. So there you go. There's, That's good. There's, there's one education. <laughs> More to come. Uh, Southwest we School of Art. It. want to thank them and thank Jessica for Absolutely. Yes. Them. Absolutely. Thanks. David, RJ, and Dylan. Yes. yes. Collins, Dylan. thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thanks for finding her. I know at the time we were talking about the number two pencil uh -huh. and you were yep. like looking through stores. And so this was a good interview. So <laughs> yeah, it worked out really, really good. So there you go, Justin. I learned a lot. Hopefully we answered your question. You did. You did and more. And I'm going to come up with some more questions. Okay. You, guys you got any more questions, let us know. I'm thinking. Yes. I'm thinking. We'll make a list. <laughs> I'm some hard ones. Okay. Well, we got to transition into weather now. And we'll uh, talk about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> kidding. Kidding. I know. What? It's like pencils, weather, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> We do have some rain out there right now. We're watching some showers and storms off to the west, and we've had a few showers uh, here around San Antonio off to the uh, east and northeast. Not much really here in San Antonio, though. We're not looking for a whole lot today, just more pop-up showers and storms. We still do see uh, this heavy rain across eastern parts of Edwards County and Real County. Some lightning strikes mixed in there, although it does look like this is trying to die down a little bit as it works off to the north and east. Lake East still getting some rain. Concan still getting some light rain. Rack Springs, eh, this is just after your east. You may not get much out of it. And there is quite a bit of cloud cover right now, too, uh, around the area. So here's what the forecast looks like. We'll fast forward to 1 o'clock. Still seeing a little bit of that activity in the Hill Country, although it should be lifting north. And then maybe a little bit of a lull in the action before we get a few more storms to pop up this afternoon. This is around 7 o'clock, so even this evening could see a little bit of activity before it all dies down tonight. The other big story is going to be the heat. Temperatures will be in the mid 90s here around San Antonio, but notice the heat index 103. The humidity is just so thick today and the heat index is going to be around 110 in Laredo, 111 in Corpus. And so as you might imagine, there are heat advisories posted down there that uh, do include some of our southern counties as you get down towards uh, Catula and Tilden. Uh, heat advisories in place there because those heat index values will jump up above 107 in some cases. Uh, you look at the numbers here, 103 New Braunfels, 104 Hondo. This is the heat index, by the way, around 4 o'clock. 107 Carrizo Springs could go as high as 110 in Catula. It's pretty brutal. And the, the forecast here in San Antonio, as far as the heat index is concerned, it's going to hover right around 100. I, I think maybe our highest heat index could be tomorrow, but we'll have several days here where the heat's going to be pretty brutal. Right now, 82 at the airport, mostly cloudy, so the winds at 13. There will be a good breeze today, so there is that. And uh, looking at the satellite picture, still quite a bit of cloud cover here around Bear County. 83 Stinson, 84 Pleasanton, 84 right now in Castroville, 78 in Uvalde, 85 right now in Catua. Dew points are in the 70s, if not near 80 in some cases. Now, I don't think the dew point is 84 in Beeville. That would be incredible, but it's probably not too far away from that. And with the dew points the way they are, that's why heat index is such a concern. 94 to 95, the high temperature, 30% chance of rain. And we'll uh, put that between 4, 6 o'clock, mainly 3 to 7, I think, kind of the range there where our rain chances will be at their highest. Very quickly, tropical storm Grace is quickly intensifying. This likely will become a hurricane here as it moves west. Looks pretty impressive on satellite. Winds at 85 miles per hour by early tomorrow morning as it moves into Mexico or at least the Yucatan, and then central Mexico by Saturday morning. Winds probably 85 miles per hour, Category 1 hurricane, and then weakening as it moves over Mexico. It'll bring a lot of rain there. 96 tomorrow, 95 Friday, partly cloudy Saturday, 94, and then mostly sunny. It looks like it will be hot by the end of the weekend and next week. And I'm going to be working on coming up with some more questions. Those guys are thorough. Very. They're really thorough. They, they got your question answered for sure. Yes, they did. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Yep.
And one of the East Side's most well-known landmarks has a somewhat lesser-known backstory. The mural of the De uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King serves as an unofficial starting point for the city's annual MLK March. The rest of the year, though, it acts as a symbol of inspiration for people in the community. That artwork was created in 2012, painted on the front wall of the Great Faith Institutional Church. The pastor says they did as a way to honor the civil rights leader, as well as someone even closer to home. Uh, I promised my late husband that this land would always be for the people and it would never go back to the world in a bad way. And the building that houses a church at one time had been a nightclub. You can learn more of the story behind the mural in this week's edition of If These Walls Could Talk. That's on our website at kset.com. It's now 10 till 10 and 82 degrees. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 953. Here's a quick look outside with Transguide. There's Highway 90 at Nogalitos and Loop 410 at Broadway. Things are running smoothly right now. And they're dry here in San Antonio, but we are still watching some pretty heavy rain out in the hill country. A new flash flood warning has been issued. This is going to go until 1230, and that includes parts of Edwards and Real County right there along the county line, just east of Rock Springs. Close to two to three inches of rain have fallen, and it's kind of training some of that heavier rain. So there could be some flooding issues there. Again, a flash flood warning in effect until 1230 for Edwards and Real Counties. And uh, look at the, the seven day forecast very quickly. 30% chance rain here in San Antonio. Otherwise, it's heat and humidity all the way through the extended forecast. Jesse, do you think any of those storms are going to drift into Bear County later today, possibly? I think we could get uh, some isolated pop up storms, mm -hmm. but I don't think that activity in the Hill Country will work in our direction. It's moving more north. OK, all right. Yep. Thank you for the update on the, the, fl the flash flood warning. If you are a fan of Whataburger Academy and fishing, this is a trifecta of of amazing proportions. Yeah, uh, they have uh, merchandise and it's pretty cool. So they drop a line for fishing fans and first ever apparel collaboration. Now this is on our website at kset.com. Yes, collaboration between Whataburger and Academy Sports and Outdoors or lure fishing fans across Texas for the end of summer season. So this line, which is available in stores and online right now, this includes fishing shirts, lightweight performance shirts, boat shorts, caps, and the price is not too bad, $14.99 to $24.99. Nothing over $25. Wow. Uh, the quote here, we had fun working with Academy and their Magellan Outdoor brand to design Whataburger apparel. We know our fans will be hooked on, said <laughs> Rich Scheffler, Whataburger Senior VP and Chief Marketing Officer in a release that came out Monday. We hope our family members and fans enjoying hitting the waterways, sporting some of these brand new items. So on our article, it says customers who spend $20 or more in store will receive a free Whataburger and Magellan Outdoors table tent while supplies last. Oh. Academy's website will have all the items up for purchase and only select items will be available on Whataburger's website. But there is a ton of stuff on there. We can tell you this right now. If you're a fan of any of this stuff, go get it right now. It's not going to last long. You're right about that. Mm -hmm. I already see my favorite, but you said there are a lot more options out there. I, I like the, the little the fish grabbing for the French fries. And there's there's <laughs> a, there's a, a, a button shirt with a sailfish with a, a, the, the oh, a, yeah. a burger stuck in there. <laughs> And their bill. Oh, That's I see that now. That's pretty. Brilliant. That's pretty cute. You have to check it out. Kset.com. Have a great day. <laughs>